Welcome to another video. I have an integration problem here that I found as one of the questions in the preliminary or qualifying round of the MIT Integration B contest some years ago. And as soon as I saw it, I said, oh, this is one of those problems where you have to take the limit instead of plugging in infinity. Well, I can do it. So I started looking into it. But at some point, it was hard for me to decide what to use as my U because everything looks the same, or at least this and this looks the same, but not exactly the same. I wasn't sure what my answer was going to be, but as I progressed, eventually I found out what to do. And as I continued, guess what happened? I knew I had to use another strategy to take another integration and then another integration. So this is a good problem for anyone who is um, into integration. If you're into integration, let's do it. However, before I continue, I want you to note there's a part of it that I'm not going to cover in this video because then it's going to get too long. It is this integral is very common in math and it is smart for any math students if you're going to a higher level to know what this integral will ultimately be. This integral is equal to the square root of pi. In statistics, it is often used and so it is something I'm going to be I'm coming back to. In another video, I'm going to show you how this is the square root of pi, but in this video, when I get there, I'm just going to use the square root of pi. Let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is find what is the appropriate u because my instincts tell me that u substitution will be a way out of this. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to make a, let's write these. I have 3x squared here. I have x cubed plus 1 here. I also have the expression minus x to the 6 minus 2x cubed. Okay, this is squared. I can see that the derivative is this. So that instinctively tells me I should take this as my u. But what exactly is this? But let's just say, let this be our u, okay? So let's say u equals x cubed plus 1. du is going to be 3x squared dx. So I can take du to be 3x squared, which is this guy. So if I make this my u, then this is 3x squared dx. That makes sense. But what do I do with this? Watch this. This can be written as minus x to the sixth plus 2x cubed. But this doesn't... If we square this, Remember, the square is not there just for fun. If I square this, what would it be? It will be x cubed plus 1 times x cubed plus 1. I'm going to get x to the 6th plus 2x cubed plus 1. So this is almost the same as this. It's just that we've subtracted 1 from this. So I'm going to go back here and do all my u substitutions. This is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of, I'm going to replace 3x squared dx with du. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to replace this with u, so I have u squared. And this expression here is the same thing as, because if I want to get this, I can just get it from here by subtracting 1 from u squared. So instead of saying e raised to power this expression, e raised to power this could as well be the same thing as minus u squared minus 1. Because this is u squared minus 1. So we can move this minus sign in here and get this is equal to minus u squared plus 1. So we can come back here and write, instead of writing this expression, 
we're going to write e to the minus u squared plus 1. Brilliant. Now it looks a lot easier. Now, but what is this? What if I don't want this guy here? You see, I could come here and say that e to the minus u squared plus 1 is the same thing as e to the minus u squared times e. Okay, so this expression can become the integral from negative infinity to infinity of u squared e to the negative u squared times e. But instead of putting a constant here, I'll put it in the back here. And I just write du. So the e is a number, it's a constant. So it's all the way to the back. Now, I don't need to deal with this anymore. This is what I need to integrate. Now, how do you integrate this? That's a lot of work, right? You see, all the methods we know will not help us get this because this is a strange answer. You can see it. Let's put this in a box. So what I'm going to do is move a step closer because this u squared e to the negative u squared does not look like this because there's no x squared here. Okay, so maybe we should try and get rid of the x squared first. It's not getting rid of, but we can do something to get it closer to this in another video because I'll have to do polar integration. That's why I'm not going to do that in this video. Just remember that we're going to use this today. Now, let's get rid of this. So what I'm going to do next is make this a lot simpler and say that this is equal to e times i where my i is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of u squared e to the negative u squared dx. So that, sorry, du, hey, du. So that way I don't have to keep carrying this e around, so we're just gonna focus on this. Okay, our focus is on this now. Go, I'm going to ignore the boundaries, okay? Consider the integral from the integral u squared e to the negative u squared du. I'm going to try to do integration by parts. But you know that when you do integration by parts, you have to choose one side that you can integrate and one side you can differentiate. And following the Lietae uh, process, it's more likely we're going to choose the u squared to be what to differentiate and we're going to do it twice and integrate this. The problem is, I don't know how to integrate this if I have to stay in rectangular form. That's why this is a problem, okay? So what I'm going to do first to make this simpler is instead of ch choosing u squared to differentiate, I'm going to make u, what I'm differentiating, so I'm going to make this be equal to the integral of u times u e to the negative u squared du. So this is what I have now. Instead of seeing it as u squared times this, I'm going to see it as u times this, so I'm going to, because I can, diff, I can integrate this, right, using u substitution, because you're gonna get, make this your, not you now, make it t or whatever you make it, and you can get this from the derivative of the top, you're gonna get 2u. We're gonna see how that works. So now, this is the integral. So I'm gonna say f be equal to u. So that df equals one. Let dg be equal to ue to the negative u squared so that g will be the integral of this expression. How do we integrate this? So I'm gonna do a change of variables for this. Just watch this, just quickly here. u e to the negative u squared, we want to integrate this because that's how we're gonna get our g. And that means we're gonna say, let um, let's p be equal to minus u squared. So that dp, this is du dp will be equal to minus 2u du, okay? Um, but I need, d, I need u du, I need u 
du. So I'm going to divide both sides. So negative one half dp will be equal to u du. That's what I need. So I'm going to replace u du with this, and this is going to be e to the u. So this is the same thing. Following this recommendations that I have here, it's going to be the integral of e to the p e to the p times negative one half dp, which is negative one over two. What would that be? That's negative one half e to the p. That's all. Negative one over two e to the p. But we said p was minus u squared. Okay, minus u squared. One half e to the p. Okay, now forget about the plus c. We don't need that right now. So this is what I get. With this, I can integrate this, which I have transformed into this. So what do I get? Remember that our formula simply says that the integral of u times u e to the negative u squared du will be equal to u v, or not u v, f g rather. So in this case, it's f g. So it's going to be f times g, which is... Um, u times this, which is going to be negative u over 2e to the negative u squared minus gdf, the integral of gdf. So it's going to be minus this integral. But because this has a minus, um, this is going to change into a plus. So what do we have? Plus 1 half of e to the negative u squared du. And that is it. Let's get rid of this. You're beginning to see where this is going. This guy just showed up here. So you see that we haven't introduced the boundaries, but as soon as we introduce the boundaries to this, this is going to be half of this. But what is this going to be? Well, this is already done. This integral will know what it's going to be. We need to evaluate from negative infinity to infinity. So now if we introduce, watch what's going to happen. If I now take this integral from negative infinity to infinity of, let's write the correct one, u squared e to the negative u squared, this is going to be equal to because I cannot plug in infinity, I'll have to take the limit. It's going to be, well, let's, let's express it first. This is going to be negative u. I'm going to write it this way, over 2e to the u squared. I bring this down, and that's what it looks like. Evaluated from negative infinity to infinity. That's how I write that plus one half of the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative u squared du. It is easy to see that this is going to be a zero. It doesn't matter how you look at it. Obviously, it's an odd function and you're plugging in two opposite values. So you're going to get a zero. Or you can actually take the limits Using this and this, you'll still get a zero either way. So instead of me putting these here, I just wanted you to see it. Instead of me writing this, I will take a limit as a variable, let's say t, approaches infinity of, I'll put t here and put minus t here. And this expression stays the same. So let's do that. So at this point, I'm going to take this limit here. I'm going to say, I think I need to move here. By the way, remember that this integral that we have here is what we started with, and it's what we called i. So when we get our answer, we need to multiply by e. Let's move this here, because I need more space. So i will be equal to, if I plug in t, it's going to be the limit, as t goes to infinity, of 
negative u, I'm going to leave it this way, negative u, oh no, I'm plugging in the t now, negative t over 2e to the t squared, okay, minus, oh, we can actually do this, I'm going to plug in negative t, but when I plug in negative t, it becomes plus t, okay, becomes plus t over 2e to the t squared. Wait, that's crazy. Do you see that it zeroes out by itself? <laughs> because it's negative of this plus the positive of this and it zeroes out. No way. Plus one half of this integral. But remember, I said this integral is this guy, the square root of pi. So what do we have? What we have essentially is that this is going to be 0 plus this, which is the square root of pi over 2. Yay! And then I can come back here and get my answer. The answer to this problem is equal to e times Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.